Hey, folks, I am glad that you're here. Dr. Joe here, and I'm going to hopefully spend a little time together and give you lots of good information that's going to help your body, help your mind, and help your health. Uh, and we're going to talk today about women's health specifically. So, gentlemen, you need to listen to this. Uh, don't turn the channel yet because we're going to talk about a lot of things in women's health that are affecting you. And ladies, we're going to talk about uh, new medical research that's out. We're going to talk about hormones, how hormones cycle throughout the month. And what does that mean? No one has ever sat down with you, most likely, and explained minute, day by day, week to week, what happens to your hormones and why sometimes you feel different at different times of the month and what to do about it. That's the most important thing, too. And I really wish someone had sat me down many, many years ago, maybe when I was a you know, 13, 14-year-old boy, and explained this to me. Because if you understand what's happening, then you can deal with it. When I hire employees at my offices, I tell them, I said, listen, tell me what's going on. Not necessarily just about hormones, about anything. I said, if it's, you're not having a good day, I need to know that. Because today may not be the day that I introduce a new project to you. Today may not be the day to discuss a changing protocol. But when we do have a good day, then we can sit down and say, All right, listen, you know what? We used to answer the phone this way. Let's answer it that way. Because sometimes, and we've all done this, someone says something to you and you fly off the handle and then when you kind of get your wits about you, you say, why did I fly off the handle? That wasn't such a bad thing. Could be hormones, could be your mood, could be dehydration, could be fatigue. We're going to talk about all that. So I want to start out by talking about birth control pills. And if there's kids in the room, again, it's not a couple of weeks ago we did the food romance connection. That one wasn't really for kids. This one shouldn't be too bad. Now, the older generation of birth control pills, a lot of problems. Millions of women took them for years, and we saw an increased risk of things like breast cancer, uterine cancer, uh, fibrocystic breast disease, infertility. Now, recently, new brilliant minds have come out, and they created a pill that's going to uh, create zero menstrual cycle. Right now, what the pill is a little bit, the newer, well, the newer version, zero menstrual cycle. Well, there's a problem with that. And the reason is this. When women have their periods, they lose a significant amount of blood, and they get rid of iron. Now, I've talked about this in the past, why men specifically should be donating, iron, uh, donating blood on a regular basis. Because if we build up too much iron in our body, it can actually oxidize. It can essentially rust inside your body, and that can cause problems. And there is one theory that says that the reason uh, men have higher risk of heart disease than women in, in some studies is that men uh, build up too much iron. And the simplest, easiest, quickest way to get rid of iron is to donate blood. It's pretty easy. In severe cases, I've, I've known doctors to order, uh, you know, order that a person do bloodletting. I know it sounds a little archaic there, but to just drain the blood. I, don't, I mean, you could just give, give away the blood if you wanted to, but some people can't donate blood. Uh, they may have a condition where their, their blood isn't usable, but that doesn't mean that they can't get rid of the blood if, if they have a prescription from their medical doctor. So if women stop menstruating altogether, their bodies are designed to get rid of iron and then build up iron again. Now, if we stop that natural process, women start to get the same problems men do, but even worse. A number of studies have shown that, that this, not estrogen, the iron buildup, not estrogen, is most likely the reason why uh, premenopausal women have such a low incidence of heart disease, cancer, and stroke. After menopause, women begin to accumulate iron faster than men, and they move into the higher cardiovascular and cancer risk. Now, the pill most likely is going to decrease iron levels, and it's been associated with things like too much iron is cancer, uh, arteriosclerosis, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases. And now if millions of women start taking this pill, it may lead to new problems. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about birth control and some options that are out there that might be safer than the hormones. Now, again, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, I'm board certified in orthopedics, I'm board certified in pain management, double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, a retired dietitian, award-winning author. This show is heard coast to coast and around the world, so we're, we're pretty well known around the world. So I'm not telling you to take drugs or not take drugs. I'm giving you options, and then you can decide what you want to do. So we're talking today, we're talking about women's health issues. This, was a, a, this question comes up to me a lot. And that women come to me all the time, and I'm going to – I have several questions that page, patients and listeners have sent me over the, over the past couple of weeks. I'm going to cover them as well. And they say, Dr. Joe, should I get a mammogram? Once again, not a medical expert, but let me give you my opinion. 
radiation is one of the most agreed upon causes of breast cancer. Not, not many people argue with that point, which is good. We all agree on something. Women exposed to radiation from nuclear blasts like in Hiroshima uh, had cancer rates four times higher than normal. And studies have shown that mammograms can increase breast cancer 1% to 3% every year. So if you have a mammogram, your re risk of breast cancer increases due to the radiation. So what I recommend, once again, listen to your, your primary care physician, but if you come to me for advice, I would recommend something called thermography or even an MRI scan of the breast. Now, thermography measures heat, and studies I've read show that it's very effective, and sometimes it can find things that a, a mammogram can't find, and even on larger-breasted women, it seems to be very uh, good. So for women determined, if you have to have your mammogram, there's something you can do. Studies have found that rats exposed to gamma radiation, which is X-ray radiation, uh, are significantly protected against the development of breast cancer if they were fed curcumin 10 days prior to the exposure. Curcumin uh, is found in turmeric. Turmeric is a spice. It's yellow. It's used a lot in Indian foods. It makes mustard, what, mustard a yellow mustard. Uh, and it's loaded with this thing called curcumin. And curcumin is a wonderful antioxidant. And it's an anti-inflammatory. It's been shown in some studies to help with cancer. So it's pretty neat to use. Now, that being said, if you're just going to take turmeric and dump it on your food, it's not the best flavor, I'll be honest with you. So you can add it to things and, and start, you can get it in pill form if you wanted to. Uh, like I said, it's great anti-inflammatory if you have an inflammatory condition. And by the way, all diseases have an inflammatory component. Now you can get it in pill form, you can get it in a spice form. Uh, curcumin is just the active form of the turmeric. It's the part that, that works so well. Uh, you can sprinkle it on your food. Try a little bit though. If you're going to get some, just be very gentle in, in, in adding it to your food. And then you could add more as time goes on. And with all spices, you always want to get organic. Because if it's not organic, chances are it's been irradiated and it may not have all the nutritional value um, that the other ones have. Folks, a lot to talk about women's health issues today. So I am going to open up the phones for any health care question. 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website for tons of information. I archive this and hundreds of hours radio, show, hundreds of hours radio shows, drjoesposito.com. Or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. Coming up, we're going to talk about other supplements I feel women should be taking on a daily basis. And men. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Friend hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. We are talking about women's health today, but men, you need to listen to because there's going to be a segment in this show where I talk about uh, how the hormones affect a woman uh, from a week-to-week -week basis, a woman that's uh, you know in childbearing years. And it's not a dig. It's, I'm not trying to say anything good or bad. I'm just trying to tell you what happens as hormones rise and fall and then what you need to do about it. And things, I, hopefully at the end of the show, you're going to say, wow, I wish somebody had told me that many, many years ago, because it's okay. There's nothing wrong with what we're going to talk about. It is what it is, but you need to know it. And then hopefully you'll be able to say, you know, you're right. These exact, I mean, scientific research, it's not me talking, it's the scientific research that says it. And you can say, now that makes sense. And maybe you want to change around your schedule a little bit for men and women, uh, depending on um, where you are in the hormone uh, cycle levels, so that you can get the most optimum uh, performance. For example, maybe job interview or something like that. Uh, there are certain times where chances are you're going to be a lot more radiant. So, a uh, question came in from a listener, Doctor Joe. I've heard about bone improvements resulting from taking uh, medications for osteoporosis. What's your opinion? Once again, I'm not a medical doctor. Can't tell you to take drugs or not take drugs, but I can tell you this. For most people, dietary changes, regular exercise, what's called weight-bearing exercises, uh, and certain supplements can help prevent or uh, even treat uh, the osteoporosis. So, for example, DHA uh, and EPA, these are omega-3 fatty acids. They can help improve bone mineralization. Most people don't get enough DHA and EPA. Now, there's three choices. You can do fish oil, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, oops, I had a caller. just disappeared there. Folks, if you're going to call, hang on a little bit, okay? I'm going to get to you. If you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, so you can use fish oil. Not my favorite choice because there's a chance that that fish oil is contaminated with mercury. There's krill oil, which is in what the DHA and EPA are in what's called a phospholipid form, which is a, the form your body needs, and I like that choice. Uh, I don't eat animal products. I've been a plant. I've been plant based now for about 32 years. Not asking you to do that. Don't worry. I'm not going to yell at you. Or people come in with Dr. Joe. You know, I eat meat sometimes. I don't care. I care that you get all the information so that you can make the best choice. I take algae oil. 
Algae is the purest form of omega-3 because the algae are the things that make the omega-3s. And then the krill eat the algae, and then the fish eat the krill. So it's the purest form of DHA and EPA. So I recommend, no matter what choice you decide to go with, a gram a day. I do a little more than a gram a day, actually. But about a gram a day is what you want to do. Also, vitamin K1 and K2. Anybody ever hear of vitamin K? Probably not. You can get it uh, uh, from things. You can get it from supplements. You can get it from fermented veg- uh, vegetables. So if you eat kimchi or sauerkraut that you made yourself, if you buy it in the store, chances are it's been uh, heated, it's been pasteurized, and so a lot of the the good bacteria are going to be killed off. The probiotics, the K2, might survive. But I have something called Dr. Joe's Vitamin D3 with K2, and it's a liquid form. One drop is about a thousand international units of vitamin D. Uh, I take about five drops a day, 5,000 international units a day, and it's in a liquid form, has essentially no flavor, and I've added several supplements, if you're a regular listener, onto my um, repertoire because so many of you have been wanting these supplements, and I've been saying, well, you can try here, try there. So why don't I just have them here? Why don't I just get them manufactured and call them the Dr. Joe brand, and they are. So if you need K2, which you should, I mixed it with the vitamin D3 because almost everybody's deficient in D3 as well. So it's problem solved. You can go to my website and get the supplements at drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe, also available on Amazon too. But you need K2, uh, you need exercise, you need DHA and EPA. A very large study reported in the American Journal of Nutrition found that eating, here we go, five servings of fruits and vegetables played the most important role in preventing osteoporosis. So you want the most important thing you can do? More plant-based diet. If you're not willing to do anything else, Dr. Joe's uh, Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Um, so you can get those on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And uh, I take a scoop of each. I have it sitting in front of me here at the studio. It's the minimum amount of nutrients you need for a day. It gives me energy. It keeps my brain working. It gets me to heal a lot faster. Uh, most people peg me for about 15 years younger than I am, which I'm perfectly fine with, by the way. Uh, because I take the nutrients that my body needs. I'm not special. I just don't poison myself like so many other people do. So Super Green is an essential source, absolute positive, minimum amount of nutrients you need every day. The D3 and the K2 I also take. we got a bunch of other supplements. We've got a B-complex. We've got an enzyme uh, supplement. We've got nitric oxide to open up your blood vessels for brain and other functions. If you listen to my Food Romance Connection, you know what I mean about that. Adrenal support, just about everybody needs adrenal support. Probiotics, these are all Dr. Joe supplements now, and those are all on the website, drjoesposito.com, or uh, on Amazon as well. But today, we're talking about women's health issues. Uh, It's been thought that high content of magnesium, potassium, and the ability of vegetables to alkalize your blood played the most important role when it came to bone loss. So what happens is if you have a very acid diet, the body needs calcium to neutralize the acids. And so the body takes calcium from the blood, and if it uses up that store, then it goes to the bones. So if you're eating a typical or the standard American diet, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, you're sucking calcium out of your bones like a vacuum. So you need to stop doing that, stop sucking it out, and put it back in. But if you just take calcium, that's not enough. Because the bone is made up mostly of calcium, but it needs all the ingredients. Kind of like if you make a cake. You need that little bit of baking powder to make it work. And if you don't put it in, the whole cake flops. All the other ingredients are perfect. But that little bit is the thing that makes it all come together. And that's what these minerals are. And that's what these small nutrients are in the bones, like vitamin K2, to build the bone mass. And if you have one thing missing, you're just not going to get it. So that's why I do recommend you eat a really good diet, and I take supplements as well, and you probably should too. Folks, if you're on hold, keep holding, okay? I'm going to get to you, I promise. Uh, the we- no, phone number is 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. And that number, by the way, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air, so in case you need to reach me for some reason. Resistant exercise. Since loading the bones with weight causes calcium to be deposits within, deposited within the bones rather than just floating around in the blood, and that's called Wolf's Law. Some guy named Wolf, don't know who he is, decided that if you put stress on a joint, calcium is going to build up in that area. So that's a good thing. It can also be a bad thing. Because if you have a bone out of place, pinching a nerve, I'm a chiropractor, so if you have a bone out of place pinching a nerve, it might cause neck pain or shoulder pain or numbness or headaches, any type of pain. So the easiest thing to do is put the bones back in place. 
But if the bones are out of place for a long period of time, they do build up calcium in that area. And so we can look at x-rays. We can kind of tell, generally speaking, how long a bone has been out of place. Hey, folks, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook as well um, because we do send out a lot of good information that way. I do appreciate you doing that because a lot of you want information and you don't know when I'm going to give a live lecture, when my next radio shows are, if I'm giving a special show. Sometimes I fill in for other hosts. So make sure you follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, sign up for my newsletter, drjoesposito.com. That's on my website. You can order the supplement. Send me questions through the website, too. If you, if you don't get on the air today, you can always send me questions through the website, order my books. Uh, I want to be your doctor. We all want to be we all, all my doctors. I have a team of doctors. We all want to be your doctors, and we need to help you take care of yourself, and then we'll help you with the things you can't do for yourself. Folks, number here, 844-44-DR-JOE, my website, drjoesposito.com. We'll be right back. Zito.com. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Glad you could be with me today. We're talking today about women's health issues. And right before the break, uh, we were talking about osteoporosis. Uh, again, I get questions, and I appreciate you guys sending me questions. You could always send them to, through my website, uh, drjoesposito.com. So I pulled out a few questions that I got in the past week or so, uh, specifically about women's health issues to create this show. And a woman called up about uh, taking medication for osteoporosis. And once again, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't tell you to take or not take drugs. But I can tell you what I recommend for my patients. And if you were my sister, what I would recommend for you. And we talked about resistance uh, exercises. And we talked about making sure you're getting enough vitamin K2, which we have as one of Dr. Joe's supplements, vitamin D3 with K2. Because uh, you're not going to get K2 unless you're eating fermented vegetables, um, which uh, there, you can do kimchi, sauerkraut. That'll give you your K2. Uh, you can take a K2 supplement, um, or you can do something called natto, which is fermented soybeans, which is nasty. I mean, I could eat just about anything, and I couldn't even eat that stuff. But this is interesting, too. There's an abundant evidence, there's abundant evidence that shows that bone-destroying cells, osteoclasts, with a C, osteoclasts break down bones, osteoblast builds up bones. But these osteoclasts contain glutamate receptors. So if you eat a diet that has a lot of glutamate in it, Things like monosodium glutamate, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, soy protein isolate, soy protein concentrate, caseinate, autolyzed enzymes. When we go through the process of creating these things, we free up glutamic acid. And glutamic acid can bind to the receptor sites, the osteoclasts that break down the bones. So high acid diets, if you're eating a lot of meats, uh, again, the body has to give up calcium to neutralize the acid. If you're eating a lot of processed foods, autolyzed yeast, hydrolyzed vegetable protein, even if you're vegetarian, eating hydrolyzed vegetable protein or soy protein isolate, you could be stimulating the osteoclasts that break down the bone. So once again, plant-based diet without a lot of processing, that's the key. Even if it's plant-based, if you're eating a lot of processed plant-based foods, like the pre-made meat substitutes, that can cause problems as well. Let's start taking callers at 844 uh, uh, yeah, 4 dr Joe. There we go. Debbie, how can we make your day better? Dr. Joe, I'm delighted to talk to you. I, am, uh, I had a surgical hysterectomy at age 55 in spite of a very clean living life, great diet, no beef or pork for th over 30 years, uh -huh. don't drink. Um, they had, I had enormous fibroids. Sure. When um, my mother was the same age, they removed a 19-pound fibroid from wow. her. Wow. And she Holy led cow. a very different lifestyle. Fast forward, I figured I would continue being with it thin um, and everything. And I really went into a descent to hell. I got with someone who was who did bioidenticals. Mm -hmm. I feel much better. Good. But the only thing is the weight. Sure. Um, and, you know, it's 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 so frustrating because my bra size went up two sizes and I have flanks. It's not that I have a stomach. No one would think I was heavy, sure. but I was a size four and I'm very mm -hmm. frustrated because I don't feel like I'm in my body. Do you think estrogen dominant women, because I came from a curvy family, have sure. a harder time with menopause? What can we do? Oh yeah. Well, absolutely. I mean, if, you know, there is a genetic predisposition. I come from a family of overweight people and I struggle with my weight every meal, not every day, but every meal. Um, and I see everyone in my family does. So yes, the answer is yes, there is a genetic predisposition. Um, some of the keys to this is avoiding estrogen-like compounds. Uh, that would be perfumes, hairsprays, deodorants, new car smell, uh, <laughs> vinyl shower curtains, vinyl purses. Any of these plastics can, can have xenoestrogens, which are foreign estrogens. And they act like estrogen in the body, and they can cause you to gain weight. Estrogen causes you to lay down fat. Fat produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. So that's an issue. 
Um, the other thing is, are you making sure you're getting enough nutrients in the body? Because even though, the, did you have your ovaries removed too, or just, just the uterus? Everything, everything okay. was yeah. taken out. So, I wish now, of course it wasn't, um, but uh, I, it's been almost five years. Sure. So the other thing we have to look at then is if the ovaries are gone, who picks up the slack? Who starts yes. making the hormones? And that would be your adrenal glands. So I see a lot of women after a hysterectomy, we need to get them on adrenal supplements. And I have my own supplement. Uh, it's called Dr. Joe's Optimal Adrenal Support. Um, that's the one I would recommend, of course. Okay. And taking those supplements gets the adrenals working because the adrenals produce uh, pregnenolone, which becomes DHEA, which becomes your sex hormones. So you took out one of the producers. you got to take care of the other producer. Can I, I, I just want to ask one more thing about the estrogen because sure. I know that's a challenge, but on the plant-based the bioidentical, I have the estrogen, I have the progesterone because you don't take unopposed estrogen, and right. I have DHEA. Good. I, I don't, apparently, you know, and I keep getting blood work on quarterly to look at the adrenals, thyroid, everything. But, um, you know, I, but maybe the adrenal support will help. I had done some of that for a while, and I did not, not yours, of course, right. but mm-hmm. I will. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just, I don't know, and I've heard this with so many women. Um, and you know, I thought that with my lifestyle, my diet, and my exercise, I I would I would be immune, and it's just very very frustrating. No, well, I'm glad you're doing all that. It probably saved you from a lot a lot worse uh, uh, horrors that you may have gone through. Um, but I would try to look at the adrenals really strong and try to keep those pu- puppies healthy. And also, if right below your bra strap area, that's the nerve supply to the adrenals. So if you if you have somebody push on your spine and work your way up and right around that area, if it's tender. Chances yeah. are you have a pinched nerve going to the adrenals. So okay. that could be a player as well. So even though it doesn't hurt all the time, if there's a pinched nerve going to the adrenals, the brain can't tell the adrenals how to work. And as a chiropractor, of course, that's my main focus is getting the spine lined up. So that may be okay. something you might want to consider as well as part of your, your protocol that you're putting together for yourself. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks, Debbie. I appreciate the call. Folks, if you have a question, 844 Dr. Joe, if you're on hold, keep holding, folks. Stephen, I got a good, good answer for you about your wife there, so hold on there. I uh, want to thank Jay. I won't say his last name. He just sent me a message through Facebook. Uh, your office saved my back after I did heavy lifting on the job. Thanks. So appreciate that. Always good news there. Um, because, again, we're chiropractors. We're a team of chiropractors that work in my offices, and we have teams of doctors that we refer to on a daily basis sometimes. Uh, MRI company, surgical, you know, neurosurgical, vascular surgeons, uh, uh, women's health issues, uh, and we do have doctors that we refer to. They refer back to us. So I work very closely with teams of doctors that think like I think, that think how can we get to the cause of the problem and not just treat the symptoms? Because if we're just treating the symptoms, sometimes that's necessary. If I get a headache, I have no problem taking acetaminophen to try to get rid of my headache. But then I want to go to my doctors and say, why did I have a headache? Is it a pinched nerve? Is it a muscle problem? Is my skull shifted? Did I take some glutamic acid, monosodium glutamate? Let's get to the cause of the problems. We want to have a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system, and good nutrition. Those are the three things I feel you have to have in order to obtain and maintain good health. That's why I have my own line of supplements. Because I believe I take supplements every day. I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source every single day. I take Dr. Joe's uh, Liquid D3 with vitamin K2 in it. I take Dr. Joe's Adrenal Supplements. Um, if I'm going to do something where I have to have good blood circulation, if I want my brain working, if I'm going to be exercising hard, uh, I'll take nitric oxide support. Most people need nitric oxide support more than I do because they eat things like high fructose corn syrup. And high fructose corn syrup... Uh, prevent your body from producing nitric oxide through a chemical process. So that's something that uh, we have. We have a B complex. Most people need B vitamins. And anyway, we, we do a nutritional workup on all our patients individually. We have an, uh, something that helps the immune system. We have something if you have a cold or flu, what to take. Uh, we have an intestinal cleanser. So it's, it's all there on the website, drjoesposito.com. Folks, got to go to a break. If you have a healthcare question, 844 44 Joe. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com or Google Dr. Joe. We also have all our products on Amazon, too. Hey, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. But tell your friends about the show. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Thanks for being with us. Talking about women's health issues today. A lot of good things to cover here because this affects men and women. When I say women, of course, it affects everyone. Um, let's, let's go to a caller right now. If you have a question, 844 doctor Joe. Stephen, thanks for holding so long. How can we make your day better? Hey, man. Thank you for taking my call. You're welcome. Hey, uh, my wife, when she's going through her time of the month, she has a lot of uh, really bad cramps. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
it kind of makes it for a miserable five to seven days for you. Is oh, there anything sure. you can recommend to kind of help alleviate some of that, some of those issues you face? Absolutely. A couple of things. Uh, number one, any type of caffeine, coffee, chocolate, tea, you probably want to avoid those because those can cause muscle contractures and make it worse. Uh, number two, as a chiropractor, we always check the nerves in the low back. And I hear this every day for the past 33 years I've been in practice. Dr. Joe, whatever you did to my low back, whatever you, you guys did, I have a team of doctors, did to my low back, I don't have cramps anymore. So many times I find a pinched nerve in the low back uh, can affect the uterus because there's a ligament called the broad ligament and it attaches the uterus into the sacrum. The sacrum is your kind of tailbone right below your belt, belt line there. And if that bone moves out of place, you can pull on a broad ligament. And that could put mechanical stress into the uterus. If you have a pinched nerve in the low back, that's the nerve supply to the uterus. So that can cause it. So we find that in many cases, by altering the diet, going to a more alkaline diet, and then checking the nerves to the uterus, specifically the sacrum in this case, we get some good results. Now, when she's having it, this is something you can do for her, and she will love you for this. Uh, I can't show you on the radio, unfortunately. but if you Just look up online and look for uh, acupressure points for the uterus in the ankle. And where it is, it's a, there's, if you look at your ankle, there's bones on either side, right? The inside of the bone, it's called the medial malleolus. If you go just below that, let me see, I'll do it on myself, below and back just a little bit. And again, if you look on a chart, you'll see it. When you do acupressure, you just poke around till you hit a sore spot. And when you hit that sore spot, you rub it. And when you rub it, it can really get those cramps to release. And a woman can do this to herself. She can sit, you know, with her leg crossed or something and run, rub one ankle and then the other. Um, we, I do this, I don't know how many times, uh, 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 you know, a month in my office with my patients, staff. Do not do that to a pregnant woman. Because if a woman is pregnant, that's, okay. that's the nerd. Uh, uh, just, just in case, got to let listeners know. Um, that is the, the meridian or the acupressure point to the uterus. And if you do it to a pregnant woman, it can start causing contractures. Now, if a woman is in labor, we know she's in labor. There's no question about it. And I've done this several times. You rub that point and it speeds up the delivery. It gets the uterus to start contracting. So those are a couple of things that you can try that should work very, very well. Check the nerve supply, get her on a more alkaline diet and rub those acupressure points. Okay. Okay. Do you think the uh, the acne breaking out? Because it breaks out a lot during when she's on that time of the month. Do you think is that diet That's related to? Almost always liver. Whenever I see acne, I always look at the liver um, because the liver the, the body's job is to get rid of junk, and it gets rid of junk through your urine, your breath, your skin, your feces, and with women their menstrual cycle. And if the digestive system is doing its job, and you're not putting a lot of junk in. The liver can break down the rest. If the liver is overwhelmed, it has to get rid of this junk some way. And that's why it comes out through the skin. And then the hormones, of course, we're going to talk about in a little bit. That's why I want everybody to hang on. I'm giving people time to gather their friends and family. We're going to talk about the four weeks of a month and what happens from a hormone level to women. Um, yes, the, the hormone is definitely there. It's definitely a component. Cleaning up the liver usually helps that a lot. And that's why taking things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, staying away from meats and sugars and dairies and coffees and sodas, uh, almost inevitably people go, that was it? That's how easy it was? I said, yeah, that's how easy it was. So give, have her give it a shot. If she's not a listener of the show, she can go to my website, listen to shows on the website. We, we are archive them all there. We have podcasts there. Okay? Great. Thank you, man. I love the show. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Stephen. And, uh, yeah, folks, we podcast all our shows. It's on my website, drjoesposito.com. We have video and audio uh, of lectures. Uh, the videos is when I do live lectures. I say I put them out there. Uh, I can't tell you how popular those videos have become over the past several years. Uh, people from all over the world, you know, they'll, co they'll come to our offices as patients, of course, or they'll send me emails or calls, and they'll say, well, I watched that video when you showed that person how the, the body goes weak when they put sugar in their body or how you can touch pinched nerves and the muscles go weak because I can show you things on the videos that I can't show you on the radio because it's on the radio. And so much of healthcare is physical, not chemical. Like, like uh, Stephen's wife with the pinched nerve, many times we find if the sacrum is twisted, pulling on the broad ligament can put pressure on the uterus. That's physical. There's not a pill in the world that's going to put that sacrum back in place. But that's what we do at our offices. So you want to get the bones put back in place, open up the nerve supply, take the physical stress off the body. We talked earlier about Wolf's Law. If bones are out of place, there's stress on one side of the bone more than the other, and it builds up a calcium deposit in that area. You're building up stronger bones. Maybe we don't want stronger bones if the bones are out of alignment. We want them lined up and then getting strong. 
So go to the website, listen to the audios, listen to the videos. Uh, again, their podcasts there, easily access on your cell phone, on computers. Listen and learn. And instead of, you know, a lot of times you, you, you're flipping through, you know, I don't know what to listen to today. I don't know what I'm in the mood for. Go to my podcasts. Get addicted to them. Every day, patients say, I was, get, I, was, I was in my car. I couldn't get out of my car because your show was on. I didn't want to miss anything. They were all on the podcast. I don't want you getting in trouble uh, because of my show. All right, let's keep talking. I've been, uh, a woman sent me this. I was diagnosed with brain cancer a few, few years ago. Can you give me nutritional supplementation? And the answer is uh, new studies have demonstrated uh, brain tumors. They're called glioblastomas, uh, multiforms, and astrocytomas. Uh, increased growth dramatically in the presence of something called glutamate. Now, aspartic acid and glutamate act as uh, excitotoxins to the brain. When they get in the brain, they cause the brain to get excited and fire off faster than they're supposed to. So whenever I talk to anyone, this goes for women, you know, if they have osteoporosis or men, if you have headaches, if you're excitable, if you have emotional swings, you want to stay away from foods that are high in free glutamic acid because you need some glutamic acid. It's an amino acid and too much aspartic acid. Um, and aspartic acid is found in artificial sweeteners, aspartame being the big, big source of aspartic acid, free aspartic acid without a lot of other amino acids with it. And glutamic acid, you'll get things from monosodium glutamate, autolyzed proteins, hydrolyzed um, yeasts, caseinate, auto, auto, autolyzed enzymes. So look for the words hydrolyzed, uh, protein isolate, autolyzed, caseinate. Stay away from those foods because those are the foods that are going to give you trouble. And because these brain tumors, are, they, they like when there's free glutamic acid and free aspartic acid around, stay away. A lot of processed soy foods, we talked about that. Soy sauce, even pureed tomatoes, mushrooms, and broth can have a lot of glutamic acid in it as well. Folks, got to go to break. If you have a health care question, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE. Uh, my website, drjoesposito.com. You can order Super Greens Essential Source, which I think everybody should be taking, by the way. If you're not taking it, get on the bandwagon. Uh, vitamin D3, adrenal support, probiotics, uh, uh, nitric oxide, enzymes, a lot of supplements there. If you have questions, send them to me through the website. Also, you can get our products on Amazon as well. But the website, 24 hours a day, drjoesposito.com. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Tell your friends about the show. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. hope everybody's having a wonderful day. We're talking about women's health issues today. Uh, what I do is uh, I always try to put together a topic that's uh, timely. And so you send me a lot of questions through my website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, please follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. If you send me questions through Facebook, I'll get to them. But the website's the best way to do it, just so you know, uh, drjoesposito.com. And we archive our radio shows there, videos, live lectures. Uh, I want you to become a Dr. Joe junkie. I want you to really start following this stuff and, and learning how to get well and stay well because this is information you need so that you can take control of your own health. And that's why we do this show. That's why we do it as often as we do. That's why we cover other people's shows with it. That's why this show is heard coast to coast and around the world. And as far as we know, it's the number one health and wellness radio broadcast in the country, probably the world, because of people like you. And we appreciate that and you telling your friends. Uh, before I went to break, I was answering a question uh, from a listener. And I'm going to go, I'm going to get to, I think I'll do this one next, um, right after this. And uh, if you have a question, 844 Joe is the number here, 844-44-DRJOE. And I'm going to talk about each week a woman goes through when she's in childbearing years and what happens to her body from a hormonal level. It's going to be very interesting. Trust me. You're going to wish you knew this sooner. Uh, patient sent me a question. A listener sent me a question. Diagnosed with brain cancer. We talked about how cancer cells get li – brain cancer especially likes glutamic acid. So it's an important to avoid, uh, to avoid glutamic food additives as, quick, as much as possible, such as soy sauce, uh, drinks, pureed tomatoes, mushrooms can have a lot of glutamic acid in it. Broth a lot of times has autolyzed yeast or hydrolyzed vegetable protein or straight up monosodium glutamate in it. Some natural compounds have been found to have powerful anti-cancer effects. We talked about curcumin earlier on in the, in the last hour. Uh, quercetin, resveratrol, uh, silmarion, endol-3-carbinol, vitamin E, buffered vitamin C, magnesium, green tea extract. What did it, where do all these come from? They all come from plants. And I take supplements that are made from plants. I take whole food supplements every single day, um, like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source. A lot of the ingredients are there are whole food ingredients. And what I mean by whole food is that it's they, the way they are in nature. Like for the Essential Source, for example, we take fruits and vegetables, juice them, take the water out at a very low temperature, 
and what's left is a powder. And with that powder, then we add prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, pretty amazing stuff. If you're not taking at least super greens an essential source, I think you should because give it a month. What do you got to lose? It's relatively inexpensive. It's about $2 a day for both super greens and essential source. Um, try it and see. And if you're not impressed, well, don't buy it again. But if you are, which I have a feeling you will be, as 99.9% .9 of patients are, you're going to be happy that you did, and you're going to find a really inexpensive way to help keep yourself healthy. Then, uh, more supplements. Most I take vitamin D3. I take adrenal supplements. Um, enzyme support. If I eat a cooked meal without any raw food, I take an enzyme support. B-complex. All those are on my website. They're all plant-based. DrJoeEsposito.com. Also available on Amazon. Now, brain tumors are made to grow faster if you have a lot of sugar in your diet. And unfortunately, that even includes potatoes. So even though it's a vegetable, we probably want to avoid those if we have propensity toward cancer. Things like fluoride, mercury, which you can find in uh, a lot of different things. Car exhaust, mercury, fish. Fish, unfortunately, a lot of fish have mercury in it. A sea fish especially. Uh, another reason why I don't eat fish. Stress, by the way. Stress can increase your risk of cancer. Uh, if you go to a more plant-based diet, you're probably going to do well. You're going to get a lot of antioxidants. You're going to get things called flavonoids, plant enzymes. Beta-glucan also helps fight off cancer as well. Beta-glucan is found in things like nutritional yeast. Now, interestingly, yeah, nutritional yeast uh, is good because it has a lot of nutrients in it and B vitamins. But the beta-glucan, when it gets into your body, your immune system starts attacking the beta-glucan. It recognizes it as something that it needs attack. And so what happens is the immune system now is activated. It's kind of kicked into high gear. And then studies have shown if it's cold and flu season, your chances, they did these studies on children, but it works as far as I know on adults too, half the amount of cold and flu, if you take an eighth of a teaspoon of the beta-glucan found in nutritional yeast, you don't need a whole lot. I love nutritional yeast. I love its rich, savory flavor. So I take it, I put it on salad, I put it in soups, anything savory. You know, I've, people have tried putting it with super greens, an essential source. I tried it. I personally, to be honest with you, I don't like it that much. But the beta-glucan also found in oatmeal can help stimulate your immune system, which is pretty cool. And so something as simple as a teaspoon, take a teaspoon, get crazy, of nutritional yeast a day can really help your immune system. Through cold and flu season, Everyone around me was sick. We had patients sick. We had doctors sick. Uh, every, I didn't have a day of cold and flu. And one of the reasons is I don't eat a lot, uh, hard, no processed sugar. Uh, I shouldn't say no, hardly any processed sugar. Uh, I take the beta glucan every day. I take Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the omega uh, the D3 with vitamin K2, which is necessary for bone growth. And I take that every day as well. So, And then other things work too, like, for example, an enzyme supplement. If you take enzymes with food, they help digest your food. If you take enzymes between meals when your stomach is empty, they then can get into the blood system and work on inflammation. Pretty cool. So if you have an inflammatory condition, taking something like Dr. Joe's enzyme support between meals can actually work on the inflammation and can help uh, break down toxins, including viruses, germs, and bacteria. So just a little fun fact on when you take supplements uh, can be an issue. All right, now I did promise you this. All right, we're going to have to do that after the next break. When we come back, I promise you, I just put it on the top of my notes here. It's like Rush Limbaugh here with my notes. Mr. Snurdly, got my notes here. <laughs> Mr. Carter, I'll call you, right? Um, we're going to go over what happens week to week for a woman who's in childbearing years and how the hormones go up and down and what you can expect and what you can do about it. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. My website, if you want to order supplements, send me questions, drjoeesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. Follow me on Facebook. Make sure you do that. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, we send out lots of good information there as well. Listen to my uh, podcast on my website, order supplements on the website, also on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. And if you have a healthcare question, lines are open, 844-44-DR-JOE, 844-44-DR-JOE. That number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, tell you hey folks, Dr. Joe here. So glad you could be with me. As promised, uh, we're talking about women's health issues, and I promised you I was going to do this, and uh, we have some callers. Please hold. Really good questions. Sarish, you got a real good question there. I want to get to you as soon as I can. But I need to cover this because I promised I would, and as the shows unwind, sometimes things get in the way. Uh, 
woman asked, a mom sent me a, a question asking about her teenage daughter and her mood swings and says, what do I do about it? So there's a really good book, by the way. It's called Bringing Up Girls. And I, I don't um, uh, recommend other books uh, usually except my own, of course. But this is by, uh, I think it was James Dobson wrote it. And it's a real good book about what it's like to raise a daughter. And uh, he laid it out very clearly as to what happens. I want to talk about the monthly cycle and how it influences the mind and the body. Now, as a man, it's impossible for me to comprehend what a teenage girl feels about herself, her family, her life, her peers. But we have to understand that you'll see, and you can do this, write it down. Write down when you're having a challenge with someone. doesn't matter, man or woman. And if you start charting it, almost always you start to see a pattern develop. So uh, 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 Jim Dobson called it the seasons of a woman's month. And every woman is different. Some individuals experience more problems. Some experiences less. Uh, but let's talk about a typical adolescent and a younger woman. This may not be so much for mature women, but this is when the hormones are really kicking in hard. First week of a menstrual period might be considered the springtime of a menstrual cycle, I should say. Yeah, a menstrual period of uh, four months. I want to make sure I use the right words here. Estrogen levels are high. They produce surging moods. The mood is upbeat. The neurotransmitters, things like serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine are very active. They're facilitating thought, memory, intellectual capacity. It's the most pleasant time of the month for everyone involved. Summertime, second week, arrives during the second week, estrogen reaches its peak and then levels off. Now, usually the pubescent girl or adolescent girl is very confident, creative, uh, and depending on the circumstances, might even be euphoric. You might think, my gosh, why is she so happy all the time? This is not the same girl I knew two weeks ago. You're right, it's not. Uh, it, it takes a great deal to upset them and worry her. She wishes every day is gonna be like this. And alas, this will change, unfortunately, for a lot of women. Uh, the estrogen is about to take a nosedive. So estrogen high for the first week stays high the second week. Estrogen, and we're going to talk about this with Sharice in just a second, why the estrogen is so important. Estrogen levels start to drip, uh, drop. Then comes the third week. Mid-cycle, she's around the third week, the woman ovulates. This is a time of her fertility. A woman is only fertile a couple of days a month. She's not fertile all day, every day. She's only fertile, in caution, if, if you follow the old Catholic rhythm method, three days before ovulation, three days after is when you want to stay away from actual uh, exposure to sperm because that's when the woman can get, get, get pregnant. It coincides with a peak of desire at that, this point as well. It's kind of nature's way of making sure that we reproduce. It's also during that week she feels a deep devotion and affection and a closeness to people she's close to, especially men. So gentlemen, if you're raising a daughter, you'll find that there are certain times when the, the, the teenage girl just wants to cuddle with you, she wants to hold your hand when you're out in public, and she's bonding to you, and that's perfectly normal. So two hormones influence, in, influence this time. First is testosterone, which you usually think about the male hormone, and the other is progesterone, and that's one of the bonding hormones. So she's got high energy, uh, she's acting like a male more so, and she also wants to bond. Progesterone makes a girl feel close to anyone that she feels that she loves. Progesterone continues to level, level out at this time. It go up a little bit. Hormone has two primary functions. It's related to fertility. First, it counteracts the influence of estrogen. So remember, the first two weeks, estrogen is high, woman is happy, everything's great. Third week now, she's in her ovulation phase. The progesterone kicks in. Conception cannot occur if the estrogen is too high. So the progesterone produces a fertile soil or a thickening of the uterine lining. So the woman is getting ready to implant the egg. The woman's body is ready to implant the egg. Estrogen level, fourth week comes along. Estrogen levels continue to drop. Progesterone levels drop. The endorphin levels drop. The hormone, the neurotransmitters in the brain. This is when you start to see the dark side sometimes. A girl kind of goes within herself. Hormone changes are very toxic to the brain, and they create depression, uh, low self-esteem, hypersensitivity, sadness, anger. She, many times she'll feel unloved. She'll say things, you don't love me, you don't care about me. It's the hormones talking. She gets a brain fog. School starts to drop off. Her performance in school might drop off during that week. She's experienced the symptoms known through as PMS or premenstrual syndrome. Now, it's followed in about three days by her menstrual cycle. There could be cramping. There could be bloating. There can be fatigue. And after the fourth week, 
we go back to cycle one again. So I'm not saying anything wrong. This is physiology and biology. But if you're having an issue with someone, like I said, chart it. You know, Ahmad was being a real jerk to me this week. And then I'll, I'll, I, if you start to chart it and then you see a cycle, he was really good for a couple of weeks. Then he, men go through cycles too, folks. And when you write it down, now I know that if let's assume, Ahmad, I can pick on you, right? It's okay. I mean, go for you're it. You're my sure. producer, so I have, I, have to, I have to pick on you. Why not? That's right. Um, so Ahmad is not being nice to me, and I start to see this pattern, and I chart it. And I know that that week that Ahmad is not going to be nice to me, maybe it's not the time to discuss, hey, listen, we need to talk about uh, changing the, the style of the show, what we call a clock in the radio business. Or we want to maybe not talk about uh, him uh, introducing new concepts into the show. But when you can chart things, you then can control, A, if it's you, yourself, or B, you can learn how to deal with other people. And so if Ahmad has a bad week every third or fourth week, I, Ahmad may not want to go ask for a raise on that fourth week because he's not going to be at his best. He's not going to be at his peak performance, and he may not take the news as uh, maybe professionally as he should. And trust me on this. If you start writing things down, it's real simple. Now we have Outlook and calendars, and just write it down, Ahmad not good or something like that, and then just start to look for the pattern. I wish... Someone had told me about this. Now, when it comes to the cycles for a woman, it's not your job to explain or promise or get angry. Take a breath. It's going to pass. You need to simply take the person who you love, hold them close if you can, tell them how much you love them, listen to them talk. That's all they need. So you can, when you can understand that there is an issue, you then can do something about it. And I want you to think about this. This is something I've had, I've had in my notes for about a year, and I wanted to discuss this with you, my listeners, because it's going to make everybody's life a lot easier. I have several of my uh, staff members, and uh, one of them particularly, she'll come to me and say, this is not the week to talk to me. And I say, thank you. I appreciate that. And that's not the week that we start making changes. That's not the week we discuss new things. And she knows her own patterns, and she'll tell me. And I cannot thank her enough for that. Because it makes my job a lot easier, makes my staff's job a lot easier, and we know that this is not the time to make big changes. Folks, if you have a question, give us a call, 844-44-DR-JOE. My website, drjoesposito.com. You can order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, all the other supplements. We have B vitamins, enzyme supports, vitamin D3 with K2, nitric oxide, adrenal, uh, a wellness booster to help the immune system be strong, uh, seasonal tonic if you are sick, uh, intestinal cleanser. I'm trying to get the supplements put together that you keep requesting. If you have a healthcare question, the line is open, 844-44-DR-JOE. You can also order supplements on Amazon as well as the website. Hey, tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Thanks for being with me today. We're talking about women's health issues and apparently a very exciting topic. Um, and I, I can always tell because so many people start to follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, and I can watch that while I'm here on the air. And I want you to do that too, by the way. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, because we send out a lot of good information about show topics, when the shows are airing, if I'm doing live lectures, I'm going to do a special event. And we want to make sure you're informed, because if you're a listener, I'm assuming this is in information that interests you. And we want to give you information uh, to help you get well and stay well. And talking about women's health issues. And, folks, if you're on hold, please keep holding. 844-44-DR-JOE is the number here at the studio. Uh, that number rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. And we're going to cover one more topic. Then we're going to start taking the callers again. Uh, we're talking about women's health issues. And this one concerns lip balms. So this is men and issue. Uh, men, men and women's issues as well. Lip balms uh, and, and lipstick. But lip balms for both of us here. Uh, new, stu new studies published in the journal Research in Toxicology raises concerns about ingesting something called sunscreen nanoparticles. Now, I know some lipsticks have this in it, and a lot of lip balms do as well. These are chemicals that are made really, really tiny, so the sunscreen won't turn your skin white. But it can damage the cells inside your body. And there's no need to forego sunscreens out of safety concerns. But if they have these nanoparticles in them, and it's good. I've, I've done shows on, on sunscreens before. You can go to my website and look those up. But if you want to put on um, the, these, the lip balms with these nanoparticles, I'd recommend you reconsider that. You can always cover your face or cover your body. That's the best sun protection in the world, by the way. If you ever go down to the islands or anywhere near the um, equator where the sun is hot, you'll notice that the tourists, 
As Jimmy Buffett once said, you know, all those tourists covered in oil. We, we, the tourists, wear the sunscreens. The natives don't wear that. What do they wear? They wear long sleeve shirts, long sleeve, uh, long pants, hats. And you're thinking, how do they wear long pants? We're wearing little tiny bikini bathing suits and we're sweating. Why are they wearing long pants? Because they understand that the best protection against the sun is a physical block. And that's why they do that. And you can do that too. But these nano-sized uh, zinc oxide particles are twice as toxic to the cells as the larger part particles because they can be absorbed into the skin. And if they're big ones, if they're not nanoparticles, they can just sit on your lips or sit on your skin, and it's not going to cause a problem. But when they're ground up really, really, really small so they don't show up as like that white paste, that's the problem. So the bottom line, zinc oxide nanoparticles have the potential to ca cause harm, but you can find sunscreens that use non-nano-sized zinc oxide or a, a chemical called titanium dioxide and still protect against sun without bothering things like your intestines when these things get absorbed. Uh, using sunscreen is a good idea, of course, and blocking it out is going to be the best thing. So if it leaves a little white paste or a little white coating on your skin, that's really the best kind of sunscreen. Lipsticks shouldn't have these sunscreens in them because the chances are they're going to be nanoparticles. You don't want to leave them white. And I'd strongly advise that you be careful not to use them. All right, let's go back to the calls. If you have a question, 844-44-DR-JOE. Sharice, how can we make your day better? Uh, yes, um, I have a question. Um, for about three years now, I have started to experience a discomfort um, upon arousal. Uh -huh. And it's kind of an internal burning sensation. And I've talked to my OBGYN about it, and I've talked to my primary care physician about it, and neither one of them really know what to say or how to advise or direct me. I've tried to sure. Google stuff, but there's so many things out there yeah. um, on the internet that it's really hard to narrow it down. So when I heard the topic that you were talking about this evening, I thought it was worth a shot to give you a call and see if you had any anything to say. I do, and I, I want to be your new best friend really soon. All right, a couple of things. <laughs> Number one, when the body's very acidic... And you can test your acidity. You can go to any drugstore and get some what's called pH paper. They're little strips of paper. And I think everybody should do this, by the way. And first morning urine, pee a little bit to clean out your urethra. And after you pee a little bit, wave this strip of paper through. It's a little tiny strip through the urine. And it's going to be a color chart that comes with it. And you want to be about 6.5 to 7.0. Trust, just trust me on this. It'll make sense when you see the color chart. If you're below... If you're below 6.5, that means you're too acidic. And many times, very tender uh, tissues like the mouth, the inside of the vagina, uh, even the ears, if you're too acidic, can burn and itch a little bit. So if you're too acidic, we need to alkalize your system. And one of the things I, I take every day to alkalize my system is Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. And my pH level, it's called, is, is right where it's supposed to be. So that might help. Second thing you could try is extra virgin organic coconut oil. Because as a woman gets older, her estrogen levels drop. And have you been through menopause yet? No, I'm, I'm 31. Okay, so you're still very young then, yeah. You can try this anyway. Take some extra virgin coconut oil and line the inside of the vagina with the coconut oil. Because the coconut oil is... Refined or unrefined, or does it matter? Uh, you want to do the organic unrefined if you can do it, okay? Okay. And just rub it along the inside of the vagina... Uh, because this is a big issue with women after menopause, they lose a lot of their lubrication. And so because of that, they lose a lot of their libido because it's not comfortable. And the estrogen level drops, and that's another issue too. But if you, line, if you use the coconut oil to line the vagina, it, it, it can help with the irritation, but it, it's non-toxic too. And then it can also help, um, it, it helps the immune system. And then if you alkalize the system, those two things would be the first approaches that I would suggest you do. The third thing I would check, of course, as a chiropractor, is I would check the nerves in the low back because the nerves in the low back control the colon, the sex organs, and the bladder. So pinched nerves could be contributing to it, but the acidity and the coconut oil, I think you'd be very happy with the results. And also be very careful, too, because there's a lot of commercial lubricants out there, um, uh, uh, marital aids, will keep it clean because kids listen to this, and they have plastics. They're made with plastics. And these plastics are xenoestrogens. They're foreign estrogen. That could really throw your body off balance. 
So they have uh, the PBAs in them and other chemicals. And so there are actually companies now that make marital aids that are non-toxic. But most of the commercial ones you're going to buy are going to be toxic. So just I'm not saying for you, but for anyone, be careful with them as well. Okay? So coconut okay. oil. Thank you so Alkalize much. the system <laughs> and then check the low back. Any other questions? Um, nope. I think that covers it. Thank you. I look Great. forward to trying that out. Thanks so much. I appreciate the call. And these are questions, too, folks. And that's why if you have questions, you can always send them to me through the website, drjoesposito.com. Uh, because some people, uh, I, I really appreciate her coming on the air. Some people don't want to come on the air. Oh, somebody might recognize my voice. Hey, guess what, folks? Everybody's got problems. You're not the only one. Whatever you have, everybody else has too. They may not talk about it, but they have issues. And that's why I try to give you a natural, holistic approach to getting well and staying well. And I'm not against drugs. I'm not against surgery. I'm against unnecessary use of drugs and surgery. And this is why the doctors that we refer to, medical doctors, uh, chiropractors, we have women's health experts, um, they refer to us when they're stumped, and I refer to them when I'm stumped. And it's nice to have this, this, uh, this group of minds that I can turn to and say, what do we do on this one? And it really is cool because most cases, patients love it. You know, I, t I tell my, doc my you know, young students, make sure you refer out to other doctors because patients really respect the fact that you go, you know, I'm going to need a little help on this one because nobody has all the answers. I don't, you don't, no one does. So we want to be your doctors and help you in any way we possibly can. Folks, got to go to break. If you want to order supplements, Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the B-Complex, the Adrenal Support, the Enzymes, the D3, uh, the Nitric Oxide, um, the Wellness Booster for keep the immune system strong. They're on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. So my books, I didn't even mention my books, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It and Prescription for Extreme Health, great books. Uh, my, uh, my blog is there all day, every day on the website, drjoesposito.com. You can call it a podcast if you want. Uh, and that's tons and tons of information. No charge. My gift to you. And if you want to make an appointment or if you have questions, you can always call when I'm not on the air, 844-44-DR-JOE. Hey, folks, don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Thanks for being with me. What we're talking about today, uh, women's health issues. And it's our last segment here of the show. So uh, if you didn't get through with your questions, you could always send them to me through my website, drjoesposito.com. And the number here at the studio, 844-44-DR-JOE, uh, rings through to my offices when I'm not on the air. So you can always do that. Uh, patient, well, a patient uh, sent me this one, but she was a patient anyway. And she wanted to know about birth control pills. And I, I think I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't talk about this. Pretty important. Uh, a few years ago, New York Times headline read, Many Modern Contraceptives Still Linked to Breast Cancer. Article summarized, it, it summarized the New England Journal of Medicine paper, which was released, uh, and it said the study followed 1.8 million Danish women for more than a decade. In the New England Journal of Medicine article, scientists found a 20% increase in breast cancer in women who were current or recent users of hormone contraception when they were compared to women who never used hormonal contraception, birth control pill. The risk linear, linearly increased 9% with less from 9% with less than one year of hormonal contraceptive to 38 with 10 years or more. So if you've been on the birth control pill for 10 years or more, a 38% increase in, in cancer, according to the study. The study did not find any, mo any modern contraceptives that used hormonal therapy as risk-free. They all slightly increased the risk of breast cancer. Now, synthetic hormones are used uh, in these items. They're not healthy for the body and can increase your risk of cancer. It's been shown multiple studies that go back over 30 years. So then the question that I imposed oftentimes in my office is, is what do you do if you don't want to make babies? Well, that's, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pickle. It really is. And I can give you some of the best uh, answers. The barrier method is one of the better, better methods. Uh, that would be condoms, and that would be the diaphragm. Now, a lot of doctors don't even use the diaphragm anymore. They just say, we'll just take the pill. But there's a risk involved. And we got to start looking at the pros and cons of what's going on. And I certainly understand, believe me, if you don't want to make babies, I certainly support that 100%. Um, the barrier method seems to work if you use it with the old Catholic method, the rhythm method, because we talked about that earlier, how a woman's uh, hormones cycle throughout the month, and there's about, there's, you know, a couple of days that she's really ultimate, a woman is ultimately the, the peak of, of being fertile, but you want to figure out when you're ovulating and go three days before and three days after and stay away from that type of contact um, to keep any, any um, chance of pregnancy coming in and then continue using the barrier methods. Are they comfortable? Eh, not necessarily. 
Um, is it better to not use them? For comfort-wise, sure. But if we're looking about wanting to avoid babies, there's a price to pay. There ain't nothing for free out there, folks. And so you might want to consider looking into think, doubling up the methods, like, like I said, the, the cycle method. And, and we have pills now. We have uh, things that you can test when you're ovulating. Use that three days before, three days after with a barrier method. Probably one of the safest, the safest ways uh, you can go, a sort, of, a short, a short of abstinence, of course. So uh, as we talk about women's health issues, we covered a little bit about osteoporosis earlier. And that's a disease that causes thinning of the bones. Osteopenia is different than osteoporosis. And this is a diagnosis that came up recently. This didn't happen decades ago when I started practicing. It's a slight thinning of the bones that occurs naturally as women get older and typically doesn't result in disabling bone breaks. So it's the early stages. And so you have to start thinking, what can I do? The term osteopenia never, never originally meant to be considered as a disease. It was a research category which mostly was used because it thought it might get, be useful for the public uh, to know about the clear uh, delineation. The bones are starting to lose some of their mass. But once again, you know, let me take a call first, and then I'll go back to this. Uh, let's take a call. I hate to have people on hold. Tyler, how can we make your day better? Hey, um, my wife uh, recently uh, did a water fast. She has a psoriasis outbreak. Um, mm -hmm. Worse than normal. Um, a lot of uh, little dots and sure. um, bumps everywhere. Um, I'm just wondering uh, if you recommend anything that, uh, any creams or anything, sure. any Absolutely. natural yeah. remedies. Uh, she uh, she recently did a water fast for a week. And um, good results? And that's, did it help? Uh, no, no. That it started after the water fast. Got it. Okay. And what happens is I find, once again, whenever I see skin issues, the first thing I always think about is liver. And again, uh, again, there's other issues that could be, but the, skin, the liver is always the big one. So a couple of things. If it's from an outside source, you want to be careful with um, dryer sheets. I know I itch like a son of a gun if, any, if I ever get in clothes with to have a dryer sheet on them. Uh, sure. Clothes soap, if she just recently changed clothes soap, that could be an issue. Uh, go to the natural ones without uh, uh, scents. Everyone should do that anyway without the perfumes. Um, and then she can also give up wheat and give up dairy products. And I find okay. I get good results with this. All wheat, not some, not a little bit, all wheat and all dairy products. And almost every patient I've ever recommended this to over the 33 years I've been in practice, plus my internships, uh, they're pretty happy with the results. And then if they do okay. cheat, and they will, they'll cheat, and they'll get an outbreak, and they'll go, oh, man, Dr. Joe was right. And from a topical standpoint, same th coconut oil, we talked about that earlier, get some extra virgin organic coconut oil and rub it right onto the rash. And that seems to help pretty well, too. But give up the wheat and the dairy. Give me two weeks, and I think you'll be pretty happy with the results. Wow. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate Thank the call. Yeah. All right, folks. I am Dr. Joe. Running out of time here. Um, so osteoporosis, we covered it earlier. But bottom line is if you go to a plant-based diet, a, a low-acid diet, which is more fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, stay away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas. Does that stink? Yeah, it does. Is it the absolute positive best way to go when it comes to nutrition? Absolutely. So go that way. Make sure you're getting enough nutrients. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin K2. And vitamin K2 is something you get from fermented vegetables. Um, but you can also get it. We have Dr. Joe's uh, liquid omega-3 with vitamin K2 in it. And I take, in the winter, I take five drops. It's 5,000 international units, 1,000 units a drop. And it has the K2 in it as well, which is pretty important. Uh, alkalizing the system. We talked about the the one lady had the issue. Um, alkalizing the system is where everyone wants to be. So get some pH papers. Uh, pee on them first thing in the morning. 6.5 to 7.0 is the graph that you look at. Is That's where you want to be. If you're closer to 6.5 or too low, your body's too acidic. Now, folks, if you want to order supplements, my books, if you want to listen to archive radio shows, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. Also available on Amazon. And if you, at least the super greens, the essential source, folks. But I, again, the B complexes, the D3s, these are all really important to, to keep ourselves healthy. Really inexpensive uh, insurance policy, as far as I'm concerned. If you have questions, go to my website, send them to me. If you need to reach my office, 844 44 Dr. Joe is the number when we're not on the air, of course. And if I don't say it enough, thanks so much for listening, folks. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time. Friends about the show.